power. All of you guys want power who watch these videos, right? You want to look good, but you want your muscles to actually not just be all show, no go. You want to have some go, and power is great. It's explosive. It's dynamic. And if you're powerful, you probably look really good. So today's episode, we talk all about power. But I know why you're watching this intro. You're thinking to yourself, Sal, get to the free giveaway. That's what I'm here for. All right, here you go. Here's the free giveaway. Maps Performance. So one of you lucky viewers will get free access to Maps Performance, one of our most popular Maps workout programs ever. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. It helps us with the YouTube algor algorithm. Make it a good comment. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to Maps Performance. Also, we are running a sale all month long. So here's what's going on right now. Maps Anywhere is 50% off. That's the equipment-free workout program. All you need are resistance bands and you can do the whole program. And also we have a bundle that's on sale. So it's called the Fit Mom Bundle, but it's for anybody. It includes Maps Anywhere, Maps Anabolic, Maps Hit, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. All of those already discounted because all bundles are discounted, but we took an additional 50% off. Isn't that crazy? Are we losing our minds? I don't know. Take advantage though. So if you want to sign up for any of those and you want to get that discount, head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just make sure to use the code NOVEMBER50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Wow, we are doing a full episode uh, dedicated to Justin, actually. <laughs> Sal and I are not going to talk. It would seem that way. <laughs> yeah, this it would is... Really uh, seem that way. I know, I feel like we, this is um, this is a long time coming here where we actually did an episode that I feel like is... Well, I gave you guys the whole bodybuilder episode specifically to old references of bodybuilder, so I'm like, there's also other aspects of training. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't highlight a whole lot on the show, but uh, do you have massive value... Uh, and that uh, revolves around power. Yeah, Although we, I did weasel my way into getting you to shape it a little bit around yeah, <laughs> my desire. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. <laughs> it worked out. So I think it's a good one. Well, you know, I think there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding. I know there was for me around explosive style type training. Sure. I thought for a long time, really, it was for athletics and athletic performance. And really, for the average person, there wasn't much value or at least the risk versus reward didn't make any sense for the average person. I definitely didn't see potential value in it for aesthetics, muscle growth or fat loss. I thought there were other better ways to accomplish those things. And um, I mean, I'll be the first to admit I'm totally wrong. I think there's definitely explosive training for athletics and sports and in, in top level athletics, what you what you see going on is the you know they, they are exemplifying explosiveness at the top level. Okay, no different than when you watch a world champion powerlifter demonstrate the top level of strength, or a world champion bodybuilder demonstrate the top level of hypertrophy or muscle growth. Right. right. So it's not fair to say, oh, it's only applicable in that case. It would be like saying strength training exercises are not applicable to the average person because they don't want to be a pro bodybuilder mm -hmm. or power, you know, strength building is not applicable because nobody wants to, you know, deadlift, you know, 800 pounds. It's just not true. Uh, and it really took me a long time to figure that out. One of the people that really helped uh, explain that was Joe DeFranco. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe DeFranco, and I mean, the point he makes is, it's one of those situations where somebody makes a point um, and then you think to yourself, duh, yeah. like, I don't know why I didn't really get that before, but, and this is true for all physical pursuits. When you stop practicing or training something, you lose that ability. <clears throat> so, and that's true for anything, even things that we take for granted, like walking. Like if you didn't walk, if you laid into bed for a long enough period of time, you would have to relearn how to walk when you got out of bed. It would be very shaky and weird and whatever. And explosive movements train your quickness and your ability to react. And that is essential for everyday life. Now, you might not be on the football field, you know, tackling other, other players, but you may step off a curb or your kid runs out to the street. Slip on something. Slip, or you drop or a grocery. Shower, That's right. Or jump and you out of your truck. Yeah, or exactly. Or I love that story. <laughs> yeah, tell that story. Well, no, really. I mean, that's your first analogy with people not walking or walking is a little extreme. There's probably nobody who's not going to do that. But I, I, there's a very clear moment in my training career, and it wasn't that long ago when this happened to me. Up until that point, explosive training, uh, because I did a lot of sport, like all the way into my 30s, 
I I always trained. I always incorporated a lot of the exercises we're going to talk about today. Um, and I had gone on this streak uh, specifically after bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, I was not doing any of this. Bodybuilding was all about l a look that I was trying to obtain. I wasn't doing a lot of explosive movements. Uh, and then after that, I wasn't training uh, nowhere near as frequently. And then just at a, one day, I would jump out of the back of my truck, something that I've done a thousand times before the previous 30 something years of my life. And I thought my knees were going to explode. And it was just, you know, my brain said like, oh, I've done this so many times. I just did it. At a, but because I hadn't trained my body that way, I didn't land properly mm -hmm. uh, and I wasn't ready for it. And it hurt. You know, and I went, whoa, that's crazy. Like it, that light bulb went off for me that I never had to like specifically go and go, oh, you know what? This coming week, I need to make sure I put some of these mm -hmm. movements into my routine because I'm losing this ability that I've had my whole life that I didn't think I would lose. But I guess it makes total sense when you think about what I've been doing for the last two or three years. I've completely eliminated that type of exercise and I wasn't playing sports. So, of course, I lost this ability to you know, to decelerate into a squat from a, 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 you know, elevated position like that. And wow. I mean, it's just wild that how that happens. It felt like overnight, although it was probably, you know, the regression over three or four years of not training that movement like that, but highlighted for me as somebody who's now in 40, like, wow, like I got to make sure that if I want to have this ability and not lose that or not get injured doing some pretty basic stuff mm -hmm. um i need to incorporate it in my training i can't I, and i could totally when joe defranco brought that up to you didn't even associate because i was always in an athletic mindset of like i'm doing these specifically with the intent to be able to move better on and perform out on the field and it's relating to this specific sport i'm doing or whatever uh but uh, going back it's funny because i used to make fun of like some of my dad's friends and they would just pick up a ball and throw it to me and then they would throw their arm out and yeah. it was just like one of those kind of ongoing jokes that when you get old, all of a sudden, like things like that just happen. Right. And this is just an adage that uh, is still people will, will say that as as like this is just part of the process of getting old and aging. And it really doesn't have to be that way if you if you deliberately program that and you, you place it into your workouts you will respond appropriately. You'll be able to still do these like really normal things in your everyday life without the the worry of being injured. I think part of the problem though is is also the lack of knowing how to do that, right? Like, you know, you just reminded me of another thing that happened to me one time. We were out, in fact, this was actually at one of the company events that we were doing. And I was throwing a Frisbee and I felt my lat like cramp up. Like just, I had not thrown something dynamically in, in that plane. Mm -hmm and God knows how long. And I felt like I tore something. And it's like, you know, if, if I'm not doing exercises in my routine that specifically target not only that, that plane of motion, but also the explosiveness of throwing something like that, mm -hmm. then of course, I'm going to feel like it has nothing to do with that. I'm 35, 65, 25, the age. It's that for a, an extended period of time, I have not trained my body dynamically like that. And it's just that, that light bulb of, oh my God, that needs to be incorporated. And I think a lot of people, you know, you said, I think it's true. They, they think, oh, you, just as you get older, those things happen. You get older and you don't throw balls anymore. You don't tackle people. You don't jump. You don't do these things. And it's because you're getting old. It's like, no, it's not because you're getting old. It's because for an extended period of time, you stopped training the body with those dynamic movements. And had you just kept those intermittently in your routine, it doesn't even have to be a main focus, just intermittently in your training routine, you won't lose those capabilities. Yeah, the whole age thing is funny. Is there some truth to it? Yeah, of course. You know, If you're 70, you're not going to be as strong or dynamic as you might have been when you were 30. But people use the age thing way too often and inappropriately. I mean, I look, I have friends in their 40s who use the age thing as a, as a reason why their back and their knees hurt and why they can't do things anymore. I, I knew people in their 30s that would say those things. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, you mentioned jumping. Like, like jumping is a very basic human movement. Now, you don't have to jump high. I'm not talking about jumping out of a pool or jumping up into the back of your truck. But what about just jumping off a curb? Like, just a short... I mean, how long? How tall would you say a curb is, right? Yeah. That's like, you know, like... Six a, inches. Yeah, six inches, maybe 12 inches, right? Like, take the average 70-year-old. Could they hop down a six-inch curb without falling or hurting themselves? No. No. Would they, if they had practiced 
the skill of jumping. Yeah, it's not a very high height. And and now, what is the? How does that apply to everyday life? Well, I mean, your risk of injury goes way down when you can move a little bit dynac dynamically. Now, now, I think we need to talk about the difference between strength and power because there's a, typically a lot of confusion between the two, yeah. right? Strength and power definitely cross over a bit, but they are different, right? Strength is your ability to generate force. Power is being able to do that with speed. That's mm -hmm. basically it. Like It's acceleration. Yeah, like imagine if I had a cable in my hand and I'm standing and I'm doing a heavy press. Like how much weight can I push forward? That's strength. Power would be, could I throw a punch in that direction really fast, right? Same muscles, but very different in terms of the skill involved and what I'm asking my body to do. Now, from an aesthetic perspective, power has tremendous benefits. First of all, yep. power activates the fast twitch muscle fibers better than anything. That's what you're calling upon when you're doing explosive power. Now, what, what's so great about this fast twitch muscle fibers? Um, without getting too deep into the weeds... Fast twitch muscle fibers that are the ones that are most responsible for physical growth and change. Those are the ones that you train when you're working out to get your butt to grow or your chest to grow or to shape your body, right? Yeah. The they're, other they're muscle fibers. anaerobic. Yeah, the other muscle fibers. I mean, it's more complicated than this, but you yeah. could loosely break them down into fast twitch and slow twitch. Slow twitch muscle fibers have a lot of stamina, a lot of endurance but they don't really change that much when you train them. So if you're trying to shape and sculpt your body, what you want to do is you want to focus on those fast switch. Fast movements activate them very, very effectively. So when it comes to building muscle, explosive movements are excellent at building muscle. Now, I don't think they should replace traditional controlled strength training, but to say that they have no place is totally wrong. They have a, a, a tremendous role. And I mean, again, you can look at certain explosive athletes look at sprinters for example mm -hmm. sprinters they do a little bit of weights but the vast majority of their training is is sprinting look at their leg development look at their core development um it, they have tremendous musculature look at cyclists that sprint right tremendous musculature look at sprinters that swim versus long distance swimmers and look at their physiques so that explode that, that expression of power activates the muscle fibers that have the most potential for change, for visible change, better than uh, almost anything else. There's also something else, and that's that when you train explosively, your body models itself in a way that allows you to move more dynamically. So if you just lift heavy, you'll build muscle. Could you build a more stiff, kind of blocky, I don't know. Blocky might not be the right term, but kind of a stiff-looking physique. Yeah, if you incorporate explosive training, you're probably more likely to build a more fluid-looking muscular physique. And we've all we all know it when I say it. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's a little vague, but we all know the guy or girl in the gym that just lifts weights, just does traditional strength training, and when they walk out of the gym and they move, they have that stereotypical you know well, meathead like muscle bound kind yes of movement. Well, another example that you could you could see this, and this has happened where I have clients like this who are somebody has incredible strength. They can squat four or five hundred pounds. But they still throw their back out, twisting back behind yes. them to grab something. Yeah. Right. So they're incredibly strong. They can squat, deadlift 400, 500 pounds, but picking a five pound thing up behind them or pulling a weed in a different plane of motion that they don't ever train in. And because they're pulling at it hard, they throw their back out or something, even though they're incredibly strong. But if you don't train that way. I had a buddy who years ago, he was, uh, I mean, he trained like a bodybuilder, had an incredible looking physique. And he was uh, with his kid. His kid was in one of those wagons. You know, those like those, what are they call Radio red flyer. wagons. Yeah. yeah. And he had his kid sitting in the wagon. He was standing talking to, uh, I think it was his wife. And the wagon, he had uh, like a brake engaged on it, but apparently didn't wasn't engaged. And the wagon started going down the driveway into the road. He turned and grabbed it really quick, right? Now, this is a guy that could, I mean, he could curl 50-pound dumbbells and bench press over 300 pounds, right? But because this was fast and explosive, he tore a bicep, right? Mm -hmm. Just reaching back and grabbing and generating force in a way that his body's just never trained, right? He tore a freaking bicep. And then there's this, like, I, you know, and I get this, right? The, 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 the majority of people's motivations when they exercise is to look good. Um, but, you know, I don't know. How would you feel driving a car that looked like a Ferrari that had a, you know, Two cylinder engine inside under the hood, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of it's kind of silly, right? 
You want, you want, you still want, all of us still at our root, although we want to look good, we still want to be able to perform a little bit, at least match somewhat to what we look like. If you don't train this, you lose it. Even though you're getting strong, you lose a great deal of this uh, ability. Well, and also to the point of, of having that type of strength that you've really been uh, honing in on improving, there's a lot of really strong, um, you know, people that go to the gym and they, they, they accomplish these lifts, which then promotes this type of like mass acceleration. Uh, you know, so they, maybe they do have the ability to do something really fast, but can they slow down? Can they decelerate or stabilize, and stabilize yeah. properly? Uh, and this is where a lot of times you see that being a, you know, a big problem because, um, you know, if you don't know how to stabilize and, and be able to kind of slow yourself down and, and gather yourself, uh, you know, this is where injuries happen and, you know, muscles actually tear. Well, this is what happened with me with a Frisbee. Uh, I had all the right muscles developed and strong that are capable of that movement. Right. So I'm, I'm training all my muscles when I, I lift, but I have not trained them dynamically like that. And so I've got all this extra. And I think that's half of the problem. So you see this with the throwing the football or the baseball is like yep. you have some some dad or guy who's been lifting weights for the last decade or longer in the gym. And so thinks he's got, I got the strength to throw the ball all the way to the outfield. No problem. But because you don't do that motion with that expression like that, that speed, and you have that strength, that's where you do get something that's tore all yes. the time is because it's not you haven't trained in that that fashion. And, and this is like sort of brings up the point of the intent. Um, and, and this is why, you know, the, the way that you set it up is so important, oh, yeah. uh, you know, in, in terms of like not incorporating fatigue, uh, being able to, you know, really hyper-focus into not just on the acceleration, but the deceleration portion and the being able to gather yourself in, in control and composure, uh, and then replicate that and, and be able to, uh, you know, rep that out, uh, the, the same way over and over. So your body actually responds that way instead of no. uh, you know overdoing it where you have no limiters. No, you get okay. What you practice is what you get. So people train the the vast majority of people I see in gyms right now that train with any kind of dynamic explosive movement are not training for to they, improve their. They explosive do it like ability. cardio. Yeah, they're they're using explosive movements to 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 for fatigue or to, burn to accelerate calories. the heart rate. Or trainers use it as a fun way to burn calories. So rather than telling the clients to run in place. They tell them to do all these explosive movements. So the client's like, oh my God, I'm doing all these exercises. But really, they're getting the same benefit as if they were just running in place. If you want to gain power, all of your reps need to exemplify power. Okay. So if you're doing box jumps, and we'll get to exercises and body parts, but let's say you're doing box jumps. If you're doing them and you're tired and you go, oh my God, I got to keep doing, I got to keep jumping, you're no longer training power. You're doing cardio with a box. So you have to do them and exemplify power in your reps. That's how you get what we're talking about out of that particular exercise. By the way, for the average person who's watching this, who's just interested in changing the way their body looks, you don't have to do much. You could take your current routine and inject mm -hmm. a few key explosive movements into your routine, and here's what you'll get out of it. More fast twitch muscle activation. More fast twitch muscle fiber activation. Your body will build more muscle simply because you're activating more fast switch muscle fibers mm -hmm. by including a power component. So even if your goal is just to change how you look, incorporating a little bit of explosiveness into your current routine will actually get you to look better faster. You can always tell a, a really good coach um, by the way they coach this right here because this is a more technical thing to teach, right? It's very just like uh, trying you when you see someone teaching like Ollie lifting, like mm -hmm. the, the coaching cues that come with explosive training are right. very, very high. Level. And you'll see a good coach because a good coach, well, let's say let's use box jumps, for example. And let's say they're doing in this this set, they're going to do three to five or whatever number, doesn't matter. And you see them do a box jump and then they're literally coaching that after that one rep listen you rocked too forward on the front of your heels keep your chest up a little bit yeah. more i want you to Meanwhile, swing the rest yeah they're resting right now right they did they did one box jump they come back down the coach is 
critiquing everything they just did. The way they were shifting their weight. Made the way too much noise when the, you landed. Yes, the position yeah. of their head, the sound when they left, when they landed. And it's like, and then it's like, okay, next one, focus on this. Boom, and they do another one. And then they're, again, coaching every bit of that. And so each rep, there's this these kind of long rest periods, and it's all critiquing the way you express all that power. You're right? trying to get power. Look, it's like you're throwing a medicine ball. And you're, let's say your goal is to do 10 reps. Your goal is to throw the ball further with each rep. It's not going to happen if you just throw and throw and throw and throw and get fatigued. You do whatever it takes to gather yourself, wait, form, you know, get your technique, generate more force faster to throw the medicine ball further. That's the goal with each of your reps uh, when you do power. And when you do that, again, if you incorporate a little bit of this into your routine, you're going to activate more fast twitch muscle fibers and you'll probably build more muscle. And it's not my opinion. This has been studied. This has been studied extensively, and it's very clear that this actually works. So not only are you training a, t a skill that you don't want to lose, not only is it going to improve your ability to, to move in the in everyday life, it's going to build more muscle on your well, body. This is why you get the popularization of uh, CrossFit, and you see how like some of these exercises get included, but. Um, it's all about the way that you perform it that will have any longevity to this type of That's thing because right. it's very demanding and it's, it, it very much exposes uh, any sort of imbalance, any sort of, uh, you know, discrepancy, you know, uh, up the kinetic chain. Like it's, it's, it's one of those things like the more pressure you add, uh, the more likely like any yes. of the weak links there will break. Now, before we get into the exercises, I wanted to make sure I was before Sal, you walked in here, I was kind of razzing Doug. Because Doug sometimes has really, really good questions, and a lot of times we just fly through something and don't think about, like, you know, coming from maybe a consumer or a client, like right. in Doug's perspective. And he was asking some really good questions around fast twitch and slow twitch fibers. Did that answer that, Doug, or do you? Is there there's more to that that you wanted to hear? No, I feel like uh, you went into the details well on that, Sal. So okay, so I feel good about it. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a lot there's a lot of confusion around fast twitch, slow twitch fibers. Like he was asking stuff like, you know, when you train that way, are you only training like those fibers? Like if they're like, when you hear people, oh, it's a fast twitch <clears throat> exercise. Does that mean the slow twitch fibers aren't getting trained and no. just the fast twitch? Like, yeah. and then we're explaining to him that like, no, you can't isolate fibers of the muscle. No. Like they're all but being incorporated. Work. Be, yeah, a lot more of them to respond. Yeah, so your, your fast twitch muscle fiber would be like your dragster engine, right? Burns a lot of energy. They, they're really big, really powerful, but they burn out very quickly, right? You're not going to drive a dragster for 300 miles. There's no way. Your slow twitch would be like your hybrid engine or your one-cylinder engine. You're not going to go very fast. You're not very powerful, but you're going to go a long distance. So long distance running, long distance swimming or cycling, slow twitch muscle fibers, throwing something really far, being really explosive, jumping really high, lifting something really heavy for you know a few reps, that's more your not fast not requiring a lot of uh, blood flow like so like you know like making so you don't need a lot of the endurance so something that's like very high demand but like a short burst right and fast twitch muscle fibers okay the bigger a muscle fiber is the harder and faster it can contract for a muscle fiber to have stamina and endurance that's not necessarily true in fact a bigger muscle fiber often will lose its ability to have lots of stamina and endurance if it goes too far because it requires more energy. So it wants to remain energy efficient. Mm. Again, long distance runners look very different than sprinters in terms of muscle mass. If you're trying to boost your metabolism, if you want a lean sculpted physique, the muscle fibers that you want to target tend to be fast twitch. They change a lot, they shape your body, they sculpt your body, they give you a faster metabolism. Slow twitch muscle fibers are great for stamina and endurance. So if you're an endurance athlete, you need lots of stamina, then you want to focus on that. And general uh, well. exercise does incorporate both. It's not like one is you're turning off of muscle fiber and the other one's turning no, on. No, but there's a focus, right? Yeah. There's a focus on one versus the other. Okay, so before we get into the exercises, let's talk first about the best place to put explosive exercises. Because here's what we're going to do, okay? I'm going to imagine that we're talking to the average listener. And the average listener is not a hardcore athlete. Sorry, Justin. Uh, that's, I'm sure we Come have on. those. No. I know we have those, those <laughs> listeners. But the average listener and viewer that we have is somebody that's interested in changing their aesthetics. They want to change their body composition. More muscle, less body fat. They want to look good. They like being strong, mobile, all that stuff. But ultimately, they just want to look really good. So they're probably following a traditional resistance training routine, or at least if they've watched more than five episodes, that's what they're doing. They have a good nutrition uh, you know, system going on as well, maybe following a MAPS program. So now they hear us talking about 
explosive movements. They're like, where do I throw those? At the mm. end of the workout, do I put them in the middle? Like, where do I do them? The best place to throw your explosive movements to, are at the beginning. Start with your explosive movement, then move to your traditional exercises. Because at the end of your workout, if you're really fatigued, then you're not going to get the power uh, generation. It just that requires you're for. more energy, more focus. Uh, you know, you want to not have fatigue going into any of these as you're performing them, just so that way, you know, what you're doing is you're sharpening, you know, that skill of being able to move really fast and respond yes. ap appropriately without anything else now, getting in the way. This doesn't mean you don't warm up or prime before well, you do these. It's, yeah. it's key. That's crucial, actually. This is key that you prime your body. Well, it's probably more important here than in any other Absolutely. Situation. The risk of injury is higher when you're moving fast, right? Less control. You know, that is something that we didn't address in the beginning of this either that I think is important to note that there there is an order of operation of going here. Like your power movements are the greatest expression of strength. Stability, sh stability should be done first. Strength is done. And then yeah. power. If you're a beginner, let's, you should hold off. Yeah, if you've yeah, been working no. out for a little while. Uh, then, then we can start doing some of these, especially the ones that we're going to talk about. Yeah, no, if you have good stability and good strength, you uh, absolutely this is a, gr a great thing to include. But yep. it's important to note that that if I'm if there's because there is for sure because we have enough listeners listening right now, and you haven't been to the gym in right. six months or a year or whatever, and you're getting ready to start, and this sounds really cool to go do your first time, like not a good idea. <laughs> no, so make sure you're primed, make sure your body's ready to go, and then here's some great exercises, and let's start with legs, okay. Two of the best ones I can think of that I think are applicable to most people. And there's a lot of explosive lower body exercises, but we're going to pick the ones that most people can do who right. are relatively are a fit. bit more relatable too. Yes. Cause well, I could throw some really obscure yeah. athletic moves. But I like, when we, when I look at what we put on here, these are, I, I think I did every single one of these with clients. Yes. With even, I did. like even like normal clients, clients that aren't training. Yeah, Cause you for can sport. modify them. Yes. Yeah. So every one of these exercises are something that I think pr most people should include in their routine. If not running through a phase, that's just like this. Totally. So box jumps, let's start with that. Right. So box jumps, great way to train some explosiveness in the lower body. Now, here's the beauty of a box jump. You can totally modify it, okay? So I've had clients literally just jump. Like, there, I didn't just, have- just in place. Yeah, I didn't have yeah. a box low enough but for this person. It's where you got to start. Let's, yes. Let's just put that out there. Yeah, so, so you don't have to jump on top of a bench or a box. You can literally just- kind of squat down and jump up as explosively and as high as you can. Jump knee tucks. And that's it. And then you you hold, you wait, you get your position, what feels good, what feels wrong, you know, okay, now I'm ready to do it again. And then you repeat this. By the way, you're not doing this to fatigue. So don't do this right. until you're until you're slow. Don't you want your last rep to be fast just like the first rep. This is not a to fatigue uh, type of workout. So typically if I do something like this, I'm doing maybe 5 to 10 reps. That's about right. max. That I'm doing because after that I start to fatigue and then it becomes more of a fatigue type workout. Now this is your first exposure to what you know a lot of Olympic athletes or coaches will talk about triple extension, and really we're just trying to organize our body in such a way where our ankles, our knees, our hips, they all in unison are able to extend. And yes. So to be able to do that <laughs> actually requires a lot more than most people realize because uh, I've seen people try and get up off the ground. I've seen people try to get out of chairs and it varies dramatically uh, based off of like your your habits or how long it's been since you've you know moved quickly. So this is a very good place to start just in place getting you know your your hips to to come back and and to be able to kind of take a nice control with this and to jump at a level that's appropriate and then be able to land land softly. Okay. Yeah, you don't Softly. want to go thump. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is all part of the, the the process of decelerating and being under control. Yeah. In right? fact, I don't even think you, you, nobody needs a box. Even athletes, you can just jump as high as you as you can in place. You, the one the one positive of a box is it's a, just another feedback tool. Yeah. So yes. if you don't have a box, or we're not including a box here, then I highly recommend doing it in front of a mirror or with your phone recording you. And the idea between each rep is to improve the jump. That's why the box sometimes is nice is because you can tell how much you cleared it by. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. that was a good jump. Because that, when, when I'm doing these explosive movements, every rep, I'm assessing what I just did. Like, right. like oh, man, I, I, I got too far forward or I squatted down too far or my hands went up too yeah. quick or you're, 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 
picking apart every detail of that triple extension that Justin's talking about. Right, and you're working your way up. I'm glad you mentioned the arms because that's one of those things that just can easily get away from people don't realize how much of a factor that is when you keep your limbs in nice and tight and you stay organized, you have way more control. And so to be able to kind of get that last component in, uh, now you're, you're improving on the process. Right, so what would this look like in the leg workout? Well, you would do maybe a few sets of five to 10 jumps and each one you pause in between each rep, gather yourself, make sure your technique is good and try and jump higher the next time that you jump. And you do a few sets of like even five, honest to God, even five of these five reps, three sets, then go into your leg workout and watch right. how you feel. Land on the pad of your foot and then yeah. drop those Now, the, heels. A, a more advanced uh, but also applicable, I think, movement would be like a hill sprint, right? Sprinting up a short hill just to try and get some of that that power and speed. And, and you can do one sprint to kind of gauge how you feel and then try going all out maybe with the second or third one. Well, this is why I like, uh, you know, hills and incline in general just because of the demand on the joints and, like, how that impact. It's very forgiving. It's it's a lot more forgiving. And so to, to be able to be able to run, like, you're going to get a lot of the benefit of the, the, the fast, you know, movement of it uh, with a, – a, a little bit less, uh, like hard yeah. impact on the more jumps. skill though than the uh, jump, right? So that no, I actually I, that's when you said that I actually don't agree with that. I think I think I would put somebody on a hill sprint first before a box jump. And yeah, no, I wouldn't. I, I think even the average person who can't jump very high, I could practice that. Having them like oh, run up a hill really hard, well, uh, you know, could be. We're, something we're, here's another positive. point to it too: is that um, it, it starts to train you to lift your heels up and, and uh, be be more in your forefoot on your toes. And so yeah, and so having having an incline helps to kind of promote that more yeah uh whereas you know the running in general and like you see a lot of people and you could hear the, runners their heels that just yeah you know really really yeah. hard on the ground by, and by, using their heels by the way doug wants us to make sure we we tell you it's up a hill not down a hill so you're not doing a downhill sprint <laughs> no, no no not downhill oh, did we, i guess we did idea. just say hills so well we assume right people yeah no know, that's, a good, right. that's a good point i'm like uh, yeah that's right doug okay yeah we're yeah. up running i so that's interesting that you would go i would go hill sprints before box jump for uh if i'm looking at a regression <laughs> or i've got a client who does not have the skills to gather himself and i think jump up on a box I would think a hill sprint is a more uh, <laughs> fundamental and basic movement I could teach them to do than really? a, than a, oh yeah. yeah. I've just well, seen I've seen way more shin scraped up and falling oh, down. Oh, I'm saying and, box and jump in place without the box. Yeah. That's what I'm starting. But hey, yeah. look, here's the deal: both of them appropriate. Yes. both of them though both of them can work really yeah, and, good. And both yeah. of them something we all should be able to do. Yes, I don't mm -hmm. care what age you are. You should be able to, run up you should be able to jump in well, place. Well, uh, let me tell you, it would suck to be a big buffed muscular person and then the dog chasing and you can't run. So yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and yeah. you can't jump over something yeah, yeah. And you get your ass bitten so yeah. all right let's talk about the hips the glutes the hamstrings and the lower back uh i think a kettlebell swing is a great movement for this kettlebell swings are great because and i remember when they first came out i thought wow here is a movement that is using some of the best components of a clean mm -hmm. that is way less technical now that's not to say that a kettlebell swing isn't technical it's very technical but it's way easier to learn than a barbell clean. That's a very yeah, you're, technical You're going to find that being uh, sort of the theme within all these exercises selected is just we know that uh, moving fast is a higher risk situation. So how can we sort of mitigate that and, and get the same type of benefits from that? And the kettlebell really solves a lot of that because the loading is very close to the body. It's very much more controllable. Uh, and there's different styles. My preference with this is hard style, which is more of the Russian swing, which um, you can even bend your elbows and shorten the lever with that mm. too for just all the emphasis being all on hips. the hip hinging yeah. and, and locking out. So this is not your bodybuilder version where you're doing a uh, shoulder, uh, shoulder raise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is not a kettlebell and swing. And you're not doing this as an endurance, because you can also do kettlebell swings for endurance. Thank you, exactly. No, this, this is, is not for time lengths. This is not for a competition. This is for a quality. Of Don't you have a good YouTube video of you doing teaching this? Don't yeah, I know. Me and yes, I have a, a couple. And then also with, with Mike Salemi, who, who does a great job, even our kettlebell with uh, for aesthetics program, which is, you know, something we don't mention very often. There's skill sessions in there that breaks down, you know, a really, really high quality kettlebell yeah. swing. Now, now to think about it, to, I haven't done this in a long time. One of the best things I ever did for my deadlift was I would start my workout with some explosive swings oh, and I wouldn't do them for endurance. Prime, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't do them for endurance. I would do five to 10 explosive swings do a couple sets, then I'd go into my deadlift. And and by the way, here's something that's interesting. 
if you set up your workout with proper with a, like a proper explosive movement for a, a couple sets, you'll actually feel stronger when yeah. you go into your traditional your first traditional lift. Like you just stretch the capacity for you to generate more force. Yeah, and you just feel stronger and more stable. And I really do think. Well, I know the studies again. They show it's turning more fast twitch muscle fibers on, so you just have more power now yeah. available, more strength available. All right, so another one for band. Uh, excuse me for back would be a band row. Now here's why I like bands. By the way, bands lend themselves really well to explosive movements. You know, years ago when I had my wellness studio, I was in the market when I first opened it. Right, one of the safest for sure. I was in the market for I was looking for a cable machine. So my studio was small, and all I had was a cage and barbell dumbbells and a few personal training apparatuses. And I'm like, I, I want some cables. Cables are very valuable. And I looked at free motion and I looked at some others. And then there was this one machine. I can't remember the name, but I think it was a Da Vinci. It was called and it had all these cable attachments on the side. But what sold me was it had a band attachment that you could attach to the, the weight stack for explosive movements. Now, why was this valuable? You can't do an explosive movement with a traditional cable because the weight stack will yeah, it'll it'll, jump on you. It'll jump on you. But when you attach the band to it, you could do it. And I loved it. And then I realized, man, you could do explosive movements with bands all the time because you're not swinging and throwing things all over the place. Bands are excellent for explosive movements. So a band row is amazing. And literally you take a heavy band, you anchor it on something that's stable. So make sure it's something that doesn't move, stand in front of it, get in position and row real fast hold that position and then come back. You don't want to come back fast, right? You want to come back, hold, and then come back and, and focus on that explosive pull. It's a very basic movement, but very effective. No, I love that. But I have to mention one of my favorite movements. Justin actually taught me this years ago, uh, one of the first times that he got me using the sled and uh, showed me how to use a sled for the an explosive row. Yeah, I, I did this for the first time with him too. Oh my God, I love that exercise. You like I, walk back, squat down, whoa, yeah. yank it back. I mean, I, I, I rip it, it back. Because you're also squatting your body down and you're lifting, it, it allows you to get that full stretch on the lats. Yep. So I sink yep. the hips back. I let the arms come forward. So I just feel that full stretch on the lats. And then from that full stretch position, I'm exploding into a row. The row yep. I back myself up, regather myself, think about how I just pulled it, planting my feet, hips. I mean, love it. It's a, it's a such a great explosive movement because between each rep of the sled drag, you have 100%. this moment of regathering yourself and repositioning the next explosive movement, which I think forces people into that. Where such like a great point, right? Like you, a lot of explosive movements, it's really yeah. easy to get in the habit of like quick, 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 doing it over and over. No, where it organizes and plans it out for you. Yes, and you so can't. You, you can't yeah, you do can't, it fast. It's impossible because it. you have to back up. You right. have to let take the slack out of the rope again. Position yourself so it, it forces this good five to seven second between every rep and forces you to gather yourself. I just love the one benefits of the I got only, from that. One of the few workouts, because all of us have been working out for a long time, and we don't ever really, I think we've only ever really worked out together. And when I say together, I don't mean at the same time. We do that all the time. But do the same workout together. I think we've probably done that five times in, in seven years. <laughs> and one of the first, really, on, I mean, it's because we all like to work out. We know what we want to do, and it's not a big deal. And then also, we're old enough to know we get competitive, and that's how injuries happen. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, one of the first workouts we ever did we had started Mind Pump, and nothing. We just we just started it. Justin was training at that facility with the big grass area, whatever, and we all did a back workout together. Mm -hmm. And I remember specifically, I'd never really done that with the sled. Yeah. And I remember we deadlifted, and, and then we went to the sled and did those. And I was like, oh my god, I had the best. What a great like like compliment to deadlifting too. It was, yeah. It was Incredible. Yeah. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite exercises. I guess the only drawback is, you do, have do you sled. have a sled? Yeah. And do you have the space? That's why I said the band row, because anybody could do that anyway. Yeah, I wanted to put it, though, because I yeah. feel like a lot of gyms now, it's becoming pretty standard You're right. now to put a grassy runway and everything. Yeah. It's, it's Definitely if it's a new gym. Like, almost every new gym now has a functional area, and it's becoming more common. So yeah. hopefully you'll see more of this, this stuff in there. And I just have to include it because it was something that was introduced to me late in my career. Oh, it's one of my favorites. And it's one of my favorite movements to Absolutely. do for my back. Another one is uh, an overhead slam or throw with a medicine ball. Great lat exercise. And yes. you're training th this overhead movement. I've talked about it with dumbbell pullovers, right? But not explosive. Dumbbell pullovers is more of a strength exercise. But you're throwing with that. That is a fundamental human movement. And it develops the lats and works on shoulder function mobility. So phenomenally. It's a great exercise. I used to do it with clients all yeah. the time. And I would have a medicine ball that they could obviously slam that wouldn't explode. 
And uh, they they got and it, it hits the core by the way too. That overhead oh, throw yeah. well, also it, gets the it's core. It's very exposing, and I've seen some people hurt themselves just to throw a caveat out there. With I prefer to do it with a split stance, so you're stepping into it and then throwing yeah. versus I've seen people with their feet arch their low back their back yeah. too much, and then they're you know hyper extending, and you're in a bad situation. So, Good point. Um, yeah, but I love that exercise in terms of like you don't get a lot of uh, exercise we can. Th- do something that quickly and expose those muscles. Well, it's like the, I mean, and it, by the way, you mentioned pullover. What a great way to, great exercise to couple in the same way. Oh, yeah. too. Yeah. You know, do a the heavy grinding dumbbell pullover and then use, then do an explosive one with the, with a ball toss. But I think you brought this up on a recent podcast, so that there really isn't, there's only a handful, if that exercises that you do in that position. We just, there's not a lot of movements that we do with the shoulders in that position. So really important to train that for strength and then even more important to be able to train that in an explosive way this is the one thing that's going to protect that you think like the shoulder and stuff with those overhand yes. throws well like this is why we're always, always addressing it with mobility yeah uh because and if you did incorporate it a lot more in your training i guarantee you wouldn't have to spend so much time yep. uh trying to regain that range of motion no 100 right. this is one of the things i keep telling people about my journey to the the deep squat like i don't have to do the mobility now work. you just have to squat i just got to squat deep mm-hmm. that's all i got to do now is it is all Always incorporate yep. that, and it and it just it keeps those joints mobile. And the same thing. This is an example with the shoulders. It's the, it's the squat of the shoulder in a sense, right? Like if you train these those pullovers and train that explosive movement like that, you should you shouldn't lose that mobility yeah. in that shoulder. By the way, if you do a medicine ball slam, do not use the medicine balls that bounce. I no. have seen. <laughs> I have you know. Good point. You I guys laugh. I almost knock them so out. <laughs> yeah. I, I have me. seen a lot of people bust their faces with the medicine ball. Yeah. So make sure it's this one that's the sandy one. This is what you're supposed to use. Yes. So again, you're doing your back workout. What do you do? Two or three sets of one of those explosive band movements, not to fatigue, just to activate those fast twitch muscle fibers. Then go into your back workout and see how you feel. All right, let's go to chest. This one people tend to get a little confused with. What do I do that's explosive for chest? One of the most basic exercises you could do for explosive chest uh, movement would be like a uh, an explosive push-up. By the way, you could modify this so many different ways. Obviously, you could do it on the floor, like a clapping push-up and show off or whatever. It's a more difficult one. You could do it on elevated surface. You could do it off the wall. It's funny. Mm-hmm. When we brought this up, Adam yeah. brought this exercise up, and I'm like, oh, that's really advanced. And then he reminded me, like, you could do it on different surfaces. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember doing this with clients off the wall. Yeah. I would have them no, stand yeah, away yeah. from the wall and just get clo- and push themselves off the or wall. Or this is another one. We, we joke. Well, it's been a while since we've joked about the Smith machine. But this is one of the things I used to love about the Smith machine is because it goes up in so many increments. So oh, and you can do like a push-up. Yeah, so it. if I wanted to teach an explosive push-up to a client and it, of, if, of any age, so if they were advanced age and they were, I had to regress it, I would just move it up to where it's almost right. you know, parallel to them standing up, right? And, so, and you don't have them clapping. Yeah. Right? So you just yeah, push, you just push off, off, right? And you you reabsorb. Right? Yeah, so yeah. You could also use uh, your bands for this. Yes. So you could wrap the bands around, a, uh, anchor a bands to behind you, and and do an explosive press with bands. Totally. So another yeah. regression to totally. the the chest press that I think is right. a very safe and easy. Or, or a chest pass with the medicine ball. You yeah. Know, where you you throw it up against the wall, or just throw it for distance, and then walk slowly over to get it face the other direction, and then do it again. That's also an explosive uh, I just movement. I love anything that where you could just focus on the concentric portion. And I think that uh, yes. these power movements uh, always consider that. And so even with like a kettlebell swing, you know, one of my favorite things to do is to just throw the kettlebell. Yeah. And if you have access, you could do it out on a, on a field. Gym. Don't do it in the gym. You know, <laughs> don't do it in the gym. But uh, any opportunity you can do where you're – you're um, using weight, but now you're able to then get rid I of it. I had a blast when you did that one time. We've never done that we before. Did, we oh, went yeah. to the beach, yeah. and we were seeing how far we could throw it over yeah. our head, and we were just hurling it. I mean, God, I was so sore from that day just yeah. messing around doing it. No, that. that was cool. Actually, if you – I mean, not to not to go back, but if you put a band around the kettlebell and, and stand on it, now you can do a really explosive uh, kettlebell swing and then place the kettlebell down in between reps. Mm-hmm. And it controls it for you, right? So you don't feel like you're swinging it and you're going to you know, hit someone. Oh, oh. But yeah, chest pass, explosive push-up, a few sets of that, then go into your normal chest workout. And again, uh, watch how you feel. All right, now let's go to shoulders, right? My favorite, and by the way, I learned explosive training uh, through this particular exercise, which is for shoulders, which is the push press. Now, I remember reading about a push press mm-hmm. In my very first, you know, bodybuilding book as a kid, and I treated it like a traditional shoulder press in the sense that I did it for fatigue. I just thought me boosting the weight up, 
the benefit was the fact that I could use more weight. It wasn't until later that I treated the push press explosively in the sense that let's say I could do 10 reps with 135 pounds in, with a push prep, push press. But the 10 rep, the 10th rep was like my last rep. So I'm treating it to fatigue. Then what I would do is I would do four reps, four explosive ass reps with 135, rack the weight and rest. And the goal was to move the weight faster with each repetition. When I treated it that way, holy cow, the gains I got from the push press. It was incredible. Do you know there's an app out? Um, God, what's it, what's that one kid? It's one of those smart, nerdy kids that's annoying to all of us. <laughs> oh, God, the, now, now if you name him, he's going <laughs> to He's a nice kid. It's not me talking shit. So he, he's, he, had a, he had a really cool uh, app that actually... Every rep, it measured his his uh, the time on his. Oh, the speed. Yes, oh, wow. no, not the speed, the time. Like so, so his when he came out of the squat, the first rep was one point seven five. The next time was one point six seven. The next yeah. time was one point five three. So it was, or actually, it would it would go the other direction. It would go right. longer, right? It took him longer to finish the rep. So you could actually be able to see the speed or basically break down the speed by the time that it takes you to well, express that. Taking it back to the push press, um, the. The, one of the biggest things that uh, was kind of a hard thing to teach somebody who had done a lot of like hypertrophy training or um, strength training in general, and then trying to transition that into now moving fast was uh, the tendency to try and just like rip it with just my arms. Right. And, and, and just like sort of, you know, not, not incorporating the hips. Okay. And like not taking it down the yes. kinetic chain further and really getting the legs uh, as a part of that. And so to, to be able to hinge the hips and then have that type of extension while also, you know, uh, contributing into, into the press part of it. Um, you know, that's something that, uh, you'll see how that benefits the lift and how much more weight actually when you get those to connect uh, what that does in yeah, terms there, of how much you can push. There's a few points I want to make with that. One is that just like strength, even more so power is a skill. So there's a lot of skill involved with generating power. Your body has to know how to organize its muscle contractions in a way to generate the most force in the safest uh, way possible. So it is a skill. Number two the more muscles you activate appropriately, the more power you can generate with the target muscle. Okay, so what does that mean? And, but this is true for strength as well. I've used this example before in a podcast. If I had a gripper in my right hand and I were testing my strength and I squeezed it as hard as I could, but I had to keep every other muscle in my body, including the muscles in my face, totally relaxed, and then I repeated that rep, but then I was allowed to squeeze everything else, which naturally, by the way, if I were to squeeze something as hard as I could, naturally I'd tense up my face and the, my whole body. By tensing up the rest of my muscles, I would generate more force in my hand. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing a push press and the goal is to generate force, you're using your whole body. So you're you're coming down with the hips and you're boosting it up and then driving with the shoulders and the arms. Here's the third point, and this is to what you were saying, Adam. Time under tension is very important for strength training and traditional muscle hypertrophy. Your goal is to have more time under tension, more control. With power, you want less time yeah. under tension. I don't want time under tension. I want to yep. drive and move it quickly. So it is very different. And if you've never done power training before, it's going to feel weird. I'm just going to say that right now. It's going to feel very, very weird. Now, you, I want to add to something that you just reminded me of that. Uh, I'm just thinking about like when I'm doing a lot of these exercises, how I'm like, I'm trying to envision how I gather myself to get ready to do it. And I actually kind of, uh, I, I, I go from my feet all the way up. I, yeah. I think right away, and it doesn't matter which exercise we're talking about. It could be the hill sprints, box jumps, kettlebell right. swings, Those sled. Are ground forces. It's, yeah, right. So I, and I love to do a lot of these things barefoot if I can, right? So I, I like to get barefoot and I kind of feel like I'm, I grip the floor first and then I set my knees, my hips, you know, get my core engaged and then I grab and load or do whatever I'm about to do. So, and every rep, you should think like that. Every single rep, work from your foot all the way up your body and think about getting it all engaged so that it can activate to your point of letting it all tense up together. Whereas if all your if it's a shoulder press and all you're thinking about is your shoulders and your arms and your core's loose, your hips are loose, oh, yeah. your feet aren't gripping the floor, you're losing tremendous amount of power. A, a huge leak. Huge, huge yes. leak in power. And you'll only be able, and you'll know, like when you train this really well, you will see, um, like let's say we're doing five reps, 
there it, it doesn't always isn't always the first rep is the best one. Sometimes like rep three. It's usually the second or third yeah, one. Yeah, it's like me. the second or third rep, you'll get and then what that is is that you're you're getting everything to communicate better. You're not necessarily stronger on rep three. You should be stronger on rep one when you have more technically more energy. But what's happened is you're starting to get, learn to gather everything to express that. Pay attention to that. So like and that's what you're trying to get at, get to as fast as you can in each and one. When you of get reps. better at it to your original point of priming, this is what sets you up for that. So you get that loud response you know more uh in the beginning right all right so another one would be like a circus press this was an exercise that we included in maps Love strong exercise. and it's a strong man typically sometimes i'll do it in competition uh it's kind of like a one arm shoulder press obviously there's a lot more body movement involved it's very explosive it starts at the floor comes up to the shoulder and then you you boost it up so it's like a push press except with one arm with a dumbbell Great exercise. Again, don't do it to fatigue. The goal is to move the weight fast and hard, keep the reps relatively low. And again, if you're adding this to your normal routine, a couple sets, then you go into your traditional routine and then and then you'll see. You'll see the difference. You'll see how you feel. And you'll see, by the way, you'll notice, I love this. I said this again. I said this earlier, but I'll say it again. You'll notice that you may actually be stronger in your traditional exercises because you started with something explosively. It's a very strange phenomenon. It's well mm -hmm. documented. It's but cool. you you we're teaching this right now like you're to to prime to go into traditional stuff, but I actually think that this could actually even work as a standalone workout by itself. Oh, it could totally. If you could. do 3 to 5 sets of one of these exercises of this this the 7 that we're going through. We're right? going through all the whole body. Yeah, I mean you you get a an incredible workout right here. Totally. 5 reps, 3 to 4 sets of each one of these exercises. Yeah. And and go through all uh all a sing, uh, one pick one of the exercises right we're, we're doing two or three for every like muscle group you pick one and do a full body routine you have an incredible you're 100 percent right 100 percent right all right uh, next let's go to core now core a lot of people think oh it's is that really explosive or whatever oh yeah I mean any explosive movement in life involves the core yeah so having an explosive dynamic ability in the core for functional uh, capabilities is really important my favorite. A uh, core exercise that's explosive involves bands. I love doing an explosive side chop with bands. Now, it's not explosive on the negative. So I've seen people do this with a band where they swing, 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 and it's not, it looks loose and it's not good. It's the positive portion of the rep. So it's the chop, control it on the way back, gather mm -hmm. yourself, chop again with a lot of speed, mm -hmm. control yourself on the way back. One of my favorite core exercises, and it also trains rotation, which I think generally speaking, a lot of people don't have enough rotation, you know, in the routine. Mm -hmm. I, I like this. I I really like the the landmine rotation, and I think we had Danny do a series of the landmine rotation. I know we have it in performance. Do we have it in anything else? Where we have the landmine rotation. I think it's rotation? just in performance. So it's mm -hmm. in performance, and I also know that we did a series on the YouTube channel. Um, I just think that one is a, is such a, a great, oh, great yeah. movement, and That's it's a it's a most gyms have the the uh, the little accessory that you put on the, uh -huh. on the thing, so you could do the landmine. They do now, don't they? Yeah, most of them have them now. Yeah. That's a that's a great exercise. What about a side toss, right, with the medicine ball? Oh yeah, that's one of my favorites. Again, to the point of like sort of just focusing on the concentric portion of it. Um, you know, taking a medicine ball across your body and being able to you know maintain your your stance in a lateral position and then you know throw it across uh, it's it's a very dynamic uh you know type of an exercise that uh, you can you can do you know um you know very very effectively as long as you have a good wall it's not going to smash you know and, and stuff's going to And fall I believe you it. did this on the YouTube channel also I did didn't do you? this on yeah. the YouTube so yeah, most like, almost everything that we've listed exercise. most everything is if it's not in a program it's also mm -hmm on the Mind Pump TV channel. All right, and now calves. Let's get to calves. You know what's funny about this, by the way? Um, one of the few things that calves is a stubborn body part for me. Part of the reason is I didn't focus on them a lot of other, like a lot of other body parts. The other part is that they just don't respond like most of my the rest of my body. And it's funny, there's a few things that I've done that really add muscle to my calves. And one of them is explosive movements. Like anytime I've done anything explosive with my lower body, which always involves the calves, like sprinting or jump rope, which is what we listed here, I do notice growth in my calves. Uh, part of me not doing them is, is actually being lazy. But if I want my calves to really develop, 
It's one of the best things I could possibly do is in, incorporate well, some funny. explosive component. I mean, you guys tease me a lot, like genetically, but it's not. I mean, that's definitely a huge part of it. But at the same time, like I d was doing a lot of jump ropes and mm. and I, uh, you know, obviously like sp sled sprints and and things like that, where I was on my toes quite a bit and I was moving explosively, which does express you know those muscles and get them. Uh, well, I'll engaged. come to your I'll come to your defense on that. We had a trip. I don't you remember Mike. Uh, Mike uh, used to a trainer of mine and had these great calves and I'd never seen him do calves and he used to always tease me about my calves of course and he he swore that like he's like bro my calves look just like your calves when I was a young kid and stuff like that and what developed him he, he's a boxer and oh, they yeah. jump rope all the time and he's like jump rope like every I jump roped every day and he goes literally that's what all I have done for my calves my whole life and I didn't have calves until wow. that until that point and he swears by that being the the answer to him developing his calves so you know he, what's funny about that speaking of boxers boxers typically if they're well developed will have muscular calves muscular shoulders, shoulders yeah. and muscular cores and mm -hmm. oftentimes upper back as well all involved with the most explosive, with all the explosive movements that yeah. they do, which involve punching, yeah. so you know there's there's some more evidence right there on some of the muscle building, you know, capabilities. Ice skaters, that's another good. One. You know, what I like about ice skaters is the the lateral, uh, you know, work that you yeah. get from it. So yes, it develops your calves, but it's also training laterally. Oh, and you could throw that in the glute area too. Because totally. When you yeah. when you do an ice, I actually Especially like decelerating. Yes, yeah. I actually love to do ice skaters for glutes, even though you're getting calf calf stability and stuff going on there, and the laterals for the hips and stuff. But uh, boy, the glutes develop big time from from ice skaters. Such a great explosive movement when you have to stabilize on one leg and then explode over the other side. It's always one I would try and incorporate, especially with clients too, because it really helps a lot with you know ankle stability and like lots of uh like injury prevention if we can like keep this in the mix uh really addresses a lot of issues that you don't uh address very often which get exposed when you're in a situation like that where you know you step on something you you slide you you know you're falling how do you catch yep. yourself how do you gather yourself and like you know it's good to train these things to be able to get your body response also another one i love to do barefoot if you can like such a good like you we talk about uh like a limiting factor on a lot of people is foot and ankle strength it's just with the shoes that we wear uh and how often we wear them all the time we we tend to have weak weak immobile ankles and weak ass feet mm -hmm. and so this is such a great exercise to strengthen both the feet and the ankles while also working calves and glutes such a good exercise to incorporate no matter what your goals are in your routine. Yeah, and I'll start slow, of course, and of course make sure you have some strength and stability before you attempt these and do the first set easy to kind of get the hang of it. But here's the challenge that I'll give everybody watching this. You can do all of these in a workout, that's great, or pick a body part that you have that's tough to develop. So we talked about every single major body part. If there's an area of your body that you have a challenge developing, try doing three sets of one of the explosive movements that we talked about in the beginning of that workout and then train your body part like you normally would and let us know. Let us know after about four or five weeks if you don't see additional muscle growth. And my bet is that the vast majority of you will. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin can be found at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. All right, if you enjoyed that clip, but you might want a little more visual aid to go with that, go to Mind Pump TV and subscribe. 